Somebody asked me to build them a coffee table, kind of a Christmas present and uh, late Christmas present. And uh, so they sent me a picture of kind of the idea that they wanted. And what I did was I kind of took the overall measurements that that catalog picture gave and tried to, you know, duplicate it as best as I could from the drawing. And basically, I really just used. Uh, some scrap pine that I had around the shop, stuff left over from uh, some older cabinets that were uh, solid wood shelves and so forth. Uh, the only thing I really paid for on this job was the piece of uh, three-quarter plywood on the top and these feet, which I bought up at Lowe's. Uh, but everything else is pretty much just from scraps that I had around the shop. And you know, I made up these panels. This is a fairly easy project to make. The only part that really took any, uh, you know, extra tools or whatever is if you're going to make these panels. You could just make flush sides out of out of plywood and just have that smooth. That would have really looked just fine, too. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do with this coffee table is I'm going to make these end panels. Now, I've already cut this... Uh, rail and styles here to make these end walls and I've got these these panels here that I've cut and pre-stained to go in uh, in the middle here. I usually like to stain the, uh, if I'm going to put a panel in the middle I like to stain it first because sometimes the panel will shift around over time and then you see a line where your stain didn't reach in there so I usually like to at least get one coat of stain on. Now, uh, I bought some of these feet at uh, the hardware store, and I think these will work. This is pretty close to what what the picture showed that would go on, on the bottom here. I may cut them down a little bit or not. We'll see. All right, we got this thing here in the clamps. Now I'm going to start working on the, uh, the front face frame of it and uh, get that all cut out get that ready to uh, go together. I'll show you how I put that together. Easy enough. Got my face frame set up, cut out, and ready to go. In fact, I have two of them, one for both sides. And what I made is a little template here because I'm going to cut a pattern here, and then all this will come out, and then I'll have the same thing on this side here. So I made a pattern so that I could copy it and then I could also use the same pattern on the ends. I'll probably do the same on the ends there. Now I've got this long run of cut here, which is a little bit uh, difficult to get a real straight line with a jigsaw or whatever. So I'm going to do that on the table saw. And I'll show you how I do that. Uh, but basically what you want to do is you want to measure how far your pattern is. And then give yourself a little bit extra. Put a mark. And then put your mark here like I did, and then I measure in the same distance over here and uh, do the same thing so that when I'm on the table saw, I don't cut too far. So let's go over there and see how we're going to do this. Start the saw, and I'm going to crank the blade up. As the blade comes up, it'll plunge its way up through here, and then I can slide it this way a little bit towards my mark. And then when I get close enough, then I'll run it through this way to the mark here. Drop the blade back down pull it out and then I'll put my pattern and finish the rest with a hand saw or the jigsaw uh, as needed. So let's see what happens here.
Okay, so now at this point, I'll just trace my pattern and finish it off with a jigsaw. Now I put this block on here because whenever, you know, when you're pulling this way, the blade's spinning, so it could kick it up. So this will kind of keeps it from right, doing now I'm that. I'm just going to finish this out with the jigsaw as close as I can to the line. I can take this over to my uh, my sander over there and dress it up if I need to. I probably will. It always helps to use a, a, a nice new blade because a dull blade just really doesn't turn, doesn't cut. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to cut some of these pocket holes I decided and I have this jig here that I bought uh, some time ago it works great fantastic I may even do a video on, on this thing because I used a couple different ones before and uh, for the money this one's worked real well anyhow pretty simple you kind of eyeball down it has two holes down here you figure about where you want that thing and then you hit your clamp. This has a stop on it. Flip it over. Now this thing will even set to different thicknesses. Of material which is very rarely you're usually you're using something three quarters of an inch but uh, I have uh, I made a a crate for a Great Dane a little while back and I used two by six material and uh, so I used the thicker setting but that's pretty much the only time I've ever used anything other than the three quarters Now I just gotta sand it and we'll be in good shape. Alright, now I got all my pieces cut out. I've got all the bottoms kind of cut out as well, the detail on the bottom. And now I'm just gonna glue and nail the uh, the outer case together. Not a big deal really, just some nails. Uh, with the glue it should hold it pretty good. Now, after I get all these nails in here, I'm going to go around and uh, fill all the all the nail holes, all the little uh, dimples. There's a product I use I've had pretty good success with. Uh, I would stay away from the typical wood fillers, like what you can buy up at Lowe's, Home Depot. Those things take forever to dry. They don't really stain that good. Here's a product... Uh, that I like. It's called Famawood. That's the name of the, uh, the company, Famawood. They're starting to sell it now in a little plastic tub, but it used to be in a can. The only drawback to this stuff is it dries fairly rapidly. So if you leave the lid off, within a few hours, it'll start to dry 
So you, you do want to keep it covered. But the good, the good side of that is after you fill your holes in just within a few minutes, you know, 20 minutes, it's, it's dry and ready to sand and you're ready to move on. Plus it stains up real nice. They have different colors, but pretty much I've only bought uh, one or two colors and that pretty much matches whatever I'm doing. In this case, it's going to be so dark, so it's not really going to matter uh, specifically. Hang on. In this case, it's not really going to uh, the color match because uh, you know the top coat's going to be so dark. But the FAMA works real good for for filling imperfections, and uh, I think you'll have good luck with it if you have never tried it. These feet, when I bought these feet, they had a screw sticking out of here. It was like a machine screw. It wasn't really going to do me any good. I took those screws out, and I bought this double-ended wood screw. So I'm going to drill this hole a little bit deeper so this goes in a little bit farther. And then I'm going to set this leg in so that the edge is about even with the uh, edge of the corner. So first thing I do is drill that hole a little bit deeper. They come down here where my mark is. Now, as you can see, I uh, I glued some blocks here so that these would have something to screw into. And then I'll just spin these right on. Now, I could have got a, a wooden dowel, a piece of a wooden dowel, did the same thing, but I like the uh, option to be able to take the feet off somebody wants to store this or replace the foot or whatever. Can't get it through a doorway. Plus, and that's how those go on. Got uh, two coats of of stain on here. I'm ready to put my finish finish on, and it's just about done, really. It's ready to go. Actually, this is the second one. This, if you notice, this one's a little bit different than the other one I was working on. I decided to make another one for somebody else. Uh, this one here, I used. I tried some raised panels on the side to see what that might look like, and this one's a little bit smaller than the other one. But basically the same design, just a, a few inches smaller each way and an inch and an inch shorter. But this is what we got. If if uh, if you were going to make this from scratch and you're going to buy stuff, you might want to use oak. Oak has a real nice finish when you uh, you know, when you go with these dark colors like this because what what'll happen? It tends to look just flat. So the oak, because of the grain, you can really see the grain in there. That really makes a nice, uh, a nice finished product. Uh, but I didn't really have much oak, and like I said, I was just basically using what I had around the shop to make these. And I think they'll turn out pretty, uh, pretty good once I get a couple coats of the uh, polyurethane on there. So it's not hard to make. It's easy to do. Just. Uh, See what you can come up with for material and knock it out. You know, buy some feet. And that's what we got.